Good evening, friends, and welcome to this service of worship for Ash Wednesday. My name is Jason Jones. I serve as senior pastor for the Bartlett United Methodist Church. We can't be together tonight physically due to wintry weather and potentially hazardous travel, but we are together in spirit as we join in worship and as we commence the holy season of Lent. I pray that the special offering will be a blessing to you as we begin our trek with Jesus to the cross. Usually, a part of this time of worship is the imposition of ashes on our foreheads. Unfortunately, circumstances have kept us from offering ashes to you. However, we will, a bit later, employ ash as a symbol of our mortality, affirming that the grace of God transcends place, transcends time, speaking and showing to us what it is that we need. If you happen to have ashes handy, however, Feel free to impose a cross on your forehead or on the back of your hand when directed on the screen. May God's blessing attend your Lenten journey. And may the peace of our self-giving Lord be with you all. Greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Let us now go to God with our opening prayer. If you will pray with me. O God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen The Old Testament lesson for today comes from the book of Joel chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 and 12 through 17 this is what it says Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, such as never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offering and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast, let the bridegroom leaves his room, in the bride, her chamber. Let the priest who ministered before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, Spare your people, God. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Our epistle reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 20b through chapter 6, 
verse 10. This is what it says. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. Be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be seen who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we were together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on the day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known. As dying and see, we are alive, as punished and, not, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything.
gospel lesson for this evening comes to us from the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, and verses 16 through 21. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and Shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. What are you giving up? The first time I was met with this question, I was just barely into my Christian journey. I had zero concept of fasting, outside the rare occurrence prescribed by a physician one which normatively precedes blood work or a significant procedure. And when the friend who put these words to me described their adjacency to something called Lent, I had to verify that he wasn't talking about the blue fuzz that I scrape out of my clothes dryer. Over the years, however, I've come to appreciate the intentionality of Lenten fasting. If I'm honest, I've come to need it. Because it functions, for me, as a means of putting deliberate effort toward refocusing my spiritual attention. Through my many Lents, I've experienced profound inward stirrings in my endeavors to detach from distractions, such that I begin thinking and praying weeks in advance about what I might lay down, what I might set aside, what I might give up. But this year, this Lent, that question hits a bit differently. Most of you will recall that 
Ash Wednesday of 2020 was our last special worship opportunity before we received notice that a virus which had been rapidly spreading in other parts of the world had reached our shores, throwing us into a state of confusion, anxiety, concern. Lots of us, frankly, doubtful about its seriousness. But far more of us wondering how to keep ourselves and our loved ones well. The first communication I received from our bishop in March requested that we suspend in-person worship for two weeks. That, it was believed, would be ample time to assess the problem and to get things under control. Now, nearly 12 months later, many of us realize just how wrong we were. Which is why I say that the question hits differently. Because over the last year, there's been a lot of giving up. And more than giving up, there's been a lot of loss. Wide-ranging and deeply felt loss that's impacted individuals, families, and entire communities. And with these, there's been much frustration and grief. There's been disappointment and despondency. There have been waves of anger. And there have been pools of tears. As St. Paul, we have felt bent under afflictions and hardships calamities, and maybe even sleepless nights. As the prophet, we've witnessed clouds and the gloom of thick darkness. Indeed, it seems in some ways as if we never left the wilderness of Lent. As if barrenness and desert have been our dwelling place for much of our recent memory. How then? Can we be asked again to fast? Frankly, what's left to give up? Yet even now, God speaks through Joel. Return to me with all your heart. Come to me, God invites, with your whole heart. The Hebrew word is lebob, meaning all of that which encompasses one's inward being, the mind, the will, the motivation. God petitions a wayward people to bring to God the entirety of themselves, messy as it is, and to do so in the midst of their suffering. True enough, those to whom the prophet speaks are understood to be devastated by their own design. What they endure, reasons Joel, is related to their own sinfulness, but that isn't finally the point. The shadowiness of the mountain and the trembling of the people isn't finally the point. Dear ones, the point is that God who is constant in compassion and who stands at the ready to extend grace, to extend mercy, to extend love, even now. And this is echoed by the Apostle, who writes to the Corinthian church, Now is the acceptable time. Now. Now, fraught with its sorrows, now, though buckled by poverty, now, though they seem to have nothing, because those who in every way commend themselves to God, in other words, who bring their whole hearts to be reconciled with God and to live uprightly, discover that those perils are only part of their story. 
The rest of the story and its prevailing truth is the new life that God can bring even now through those experiences. The life that God wants all of us to have and that Jesus Christ came to share. Which is why Jesus spent time instructing as he did and why he wanted his hearers to know that what God truly wanted them to give up was themselves. You see, we can give and, and we can pray and, and we can fast as much as anyone, but, but even the most generous gifts, even the most eloquent prayers, even the most sacrificial abstinence amount to nothing if they are only offered to garner the acclaim of others or to feel congratulated within ourselves. Now what matters most, contends Jesus, alongside of Joel and Paul, is not external circumstance. What matters most isn't what's happening or what comes from out there, where there's plenty of bad stuff and where even the best of good stuff can be wrecked by moth and rust or ransacked by thieves. No. What matters most, beloved, is where our heart is. Because that is what binds us to the eternal, and that is what opens for us the way of life. So what then might we give up? Well, I think the best we can offer is what God has asked for all, all along. And so as our Lenten journey begins, may we each of us commit ourselves anew to emptying ourselves of ourselves, presenting our hearts to our Maker, that we might be filled instead with God's goodness and God's light to the end that we fill our world with the same. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive now this invitation to the observance of Lenten discipline. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by the penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church to observe a holy Lent by self-examinations and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of your mortal nature, let us now bow before our Creator and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Dear friends, 
remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Knowing this, let us repent and believe the gospel. Amen. communal confession comes from Psalm 51 verses 1 through 17. I invite you to repeat along with me the confession part of it, the responsive part of it, as those words appear on the bottom of your screen. These are the words that we are going to say all together. Cast me not from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Let us confess. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, I have sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Cast me not from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit, from me. Behold you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore teach me wisdom in my sacred heart. Purge me with hyssop and shall be clean and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken to rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Cast me not 
from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, God of salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I, were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice accepted to God is a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Cast me not from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept our repentance, forgive our sins, and restore us by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer gestures of peace to those near to us this evening. And may we remember with peace those whom we hold in our hearts. And now, with confidence that we are children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
go forth in peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.